<laughs> wow, this car just blows away. This car got a lot more fun, let me tell you. Oh my God. Hey guys, it's Glenn from Glenn'sCarCollection.com and today's going to be my 1000 mile review of my 2020 BMW M340i xDrive. So I'm really, really excited because this, I'm about to hit 1000 miles on this drive and we're going to give it a full send. So we got about 5 miles to go, so we'll talk about uh, why I chose this car, what I like and what I don't like about it, and by then we'll hit the 1000 mile mark and then we can do some acceleration. So watch to the end of the video. Remember to like and share this video so our channel can grow. And as always, leave a positive comment below. I will respond to each and every one of your comments. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I post three videos a week. All right. So why did I choose the M340i xDrive? So I guess, let me give you the background. And uh, I had the Audi S8 as my daily driver, 2013. Typically for my real estate business, because I'm a commercial real estate broker, I'll buy a, I actually, I used my E90 M3 was my real estate car. I had an Audi S4, Nagara Blue 6 speed me out of my real estate car. Uh, I used, you know, my wife's uh, Jeep Grand Cherokees many times for, can't accelerate yet, we're not at a thousand miles, uh, for my real estate car. And the last two years, I've been using the 2013 Audi S8, which had the twin turbo V8, 520 horsepower, which if you put it on a dyno was closer to 600 horsepower. And that was a great car, zero to 16, about 3.6 seconds. The downsides, if you watch those videos, what I didn't like, it was 17 feet long, and the added warranty repairs were very, very expensive. Also, the running costs were very expensive. 21 inch tires came with summer tires. I went through a couple sets of summer tires over the 20 or 30,000 miles I drove the car. And, uh, you know, it was due for brakes again, due for tires. I had to get a tire rack, a winter set of wheels, so it was very, very expensive. I wanted a car that I could just lease a new car where I didn't have to worry about repairs, maintenance, especially maintenance, and unfortunately had all season tires so I didn't have to do a summer or winter set. Too complicated for work. I wanted one all wheel drive car. Now with everything going on, who knows, now I've been working from home, just going out for showings, and I haven't played hockey since February, but typically I wanted a winter car for hockey because the weather could be terrible. I could be at the rink playing, I'd come out, it's an ice storm or snowstorm, or if I have to meet a client, I can't say I can't go because it's icy or snowy. So I always wanted to have uh, an all-wheel drive car. But I wanted something fun to drive. So I wanted something almost as fast as the Audi. It'd be perfect if it was as fast. And, uh, you know, something that was, I don't care about gas mileage so much, but decent on gas can't hurt. Having the room for my clients and also being a good performer. Because a lot of times I'm just driving around looking at buildings or going to hockey. I want to have the handling. Let's turn left here. So, BMW fit the bill because of the free maintenance. That would really limit my cost. And the real estate investor on me wants to limit my cost, especially on a daily driver. You know, the other sports cars, hey, I could justify the tires are expensive or the brakes are expensive or whatever. The maintenance is expensive. But hey, I'm having such a good time driving and it's, it's definitely worth it. For my daily driver, it's a little harder to justify. But I still wanted something to fun since I'm going to be in this car every day. So I apologize after three months, I did this lease around June 1st, I think May 31st technically. So I, I should really have thousands of miles on this car already because I drive so much. Unfortunately, I've been working from home, so I'm just hitting a thousand miles on this drive. So I'm really excited. We're only a couple miles away from hitting the gas here. So the biggest thing for me is, you know, this is my eighth BMW. My first BMW automatic transmission, all the other seven have been manual transmissions. And uh, so it's a little different getting used to a torque converter automatic, but I can tell you this, this is the same transmission, the ZF8 speed I had in my Audi S8, but obviously newer, seven year newer car, and uh, they've done a really, really good job with the automatic transmission. So the free maintenance is kind of what sold me on this car, besides being a good handling car. I did a review for BMW Tenafly in the fall, 
uh, when the M340i X Drive came out, and I even said if I could do a straight up trade, I would do it. My Audi was probably worth thirty-five thousand, and this was a sixty-five thousand dollar car, so the numbers didn't work. But I would have done it. Wow, look at this big truck! I would have done it if it was even. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. But when the, the leases came to a decent price that I could afford, after trading in the Audi S8 on the new uh, Miami Blue manual 911, I was able to get some great numbers. Thank you, BMW 1005, for giving me a great lease on this car. So, a thousand miles in, what other cars did I consider? Well, the only other car I considered rather than this car was the C43 AMG. I know it's not a real AMG, just like this is not a real M car, even though BMW considers it to be. And the lease payment on the AMG, since I've had so many BMWs, I've had two AMGs, maybe I'd try an AMG Lite. That car had good reviews, even though I've never actually driven the C43. And uh, though I love the C63, and I wanted all-wheel drive, so I'd get the C43 and all-wheel drive. That, the lease payment was almost $200 a month more for 12,000 miles a year, three years. So I assume that this car just has a better resale value or BMW was discounting uh, the numbers. See, when I move my hands, okay, so that's one of the things I don't like about this car. I, I talk with my hands and it's, BMW's waiting me to speak and that's what I see on my heads-up display right now. So something I love, the heads-up display, something I don't like is every time I move my hands or vlog to you guys, the BMW, uh, is asking me what I want or what I need to do. I don't want to do anything. I just want to drive and do this car review. <laughs> All right, we're about a mile away from giving it a full send here. So what do I love about the car? Obviously, well, let me give you the stats first and then it'll may probably be self-explanatory. Uh, it's got a turbocharged six cylinder in line six, not the four cylinder that the 330 has. So the numbering system is confusing now. And uh, it is produces 382 horsepower more importantly, 369 foot-pounds of torque, and that torque is available at 1,600 RPM. So this car has a ton of torque compared to my E46 M3. Uh, steering feel is your typical electric detached steering wheel. That's probably the most disappointing thing. Uh, one of the most disappointing things is the, uh, is the steering feel. I love the torque. I love the power. Car and driver got this car. 3.8 seconds to 60, the all-wheel drive version. About 4 seconds, 4.1 seconds on the rear drive version. Now, the car is heavy, so depending on options, it's about 3,900 pounds, give or take. Another downside is only one transmission is offered, but again, it's a very good transmission for sure. All right, we're, sorry BMW, I'm not talking to you. And uh, we're gonna put it in sport mode, because we've now hit, we have now hit, we're gonna put it in sport plus. We have now hit the, uh, the magic uh, of a thousand miles. So now we can give it a full set. So again, I love the power, I love the handling. I love this M differential, that's standard. So there are M sports no matter what, if you get the M340. The 330, you can get the regular car, or for about $5,000, the M package. But this is automatically, uh, I guess, an M sport if you go for this bigger engine. I love Sport. Sport Plus obviously gives you a high throttle response. You can do manual shifts, even though it's torque converter automatic. And then it actually gives you a rev counter going across for the RPMs. So Though it doesn't actually tell you what RPM you're on, it has a graph goes from white, yellow to red. And then obviously it tells you the speed limit and how fast you're going. Right now the speed limit is 35. We're only going 20 because we're behind this big truck. Uh, so while we're stuck in traffic, let me tell you what I don't like. What I don't like is the all-season tires. They don't have that much grip compared to summer tires. The way these cars are equipped here in the Northeast, they all come with all-wheel drive and summer tires, at least that I've seen that are on de dealer lots here. All right, we're gonna put it in manual mode too. I think if you were in other parts of the country, you could get uh, rear drive and the summer tires. Bumpy roads here. All right, so we're gonna do our first acceleration with the car and you're with me. So the downside is I haven't been to accelerate the car, so it's like, all right, it's a nice car, but it, maybe it's nothing special, you know what I mean? So. Let's see if we can get it into manual mode. All right, we're putting it in the second gear, manual mode of torque converter automatic. We have that M differential, and let's go. First acceleration. Wow. Wow. Woo! That was fast. So it was zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds. I definitely believe it. That was super fast uh, acceleration. Wow, that was great. You can play around with the meters here. We've gone through that in other videos. So you can actually see your torque and horsepower. Uh, what I don't like is you don't see the odometer, which is important for me since I'm on a lease, unless just before when you shut off the car, you see it. So uh, somebody else told me you can go on one of the screens. They're probably right on I'm wrong. I must be doing something wrong. 
I still don't see it going in the other screens. I only see it when I shut off the car and it blinks for a second, so you really gotta be looking for it. Ride quality is a little stiffer. It's way stiffer than my Audi S8, but I wouldn't say it's F80 M3 stiff. The issue is really, I think, the run flat tires. They're hard as a rock, so I don't think it's the suspension. I think it's the tires. Again, for spirited uh, canyon runs, I think uh, the tires kind of give up quickly. I haven't, because I haven't been able to accelerate and go uh, high RPMs or anything aggressive. I can't really comment on the tires, but you know, trying to take some turns around my house, maybe at slower speeds or sharper turns, I noticed that uh, you know the tires are the one. Obviously, that's losing grip first because they're all season tires. We're going to take some back roads up here. So on the highway, if you go on expansion joints on a highway or a bridge, you'll definitely feel that. Again, I think it's more tires than it is suspension. The handling is really, really good. So how does this compare with the F80 M3? Well, that is definitely another level. Uh, that is way more M car than this. Like, I would call this an M Sport like BMW does or an M Light because it is just, uh, so it's downshifting for us since we're in the Sport Plus mode. So it is, I'm doing this late in the day, so forgive me, the sun isn't, uh, it's not really shining on me here, even though we have the sunroof up. I haven't really used the sunroof, I'm not a sunroof person, so if you like it so much, you use it. But, uh, <laughs> another thing on the car, I love the car, but it is pretty expensive, but they lease pretty decent. So, uh, this car is fully loaded, so you have all the safety features. I wanted this color, so I pretty much had to buy what they had on the lot. In action, and uh, so this car had an MSRP of 66,000. The lease payment was 5,000 total out of pocket, so that counts cap cost reduction, which is your down payment, uh, any fees, sales tax, and the payment was like $600 a month uh, with 5,000 out of pocket, 12,000 miles a year for three years. And compared to the Mercedes, which was almost 800 a month, the C43, not even the real AMG yet, I think it's totally, totally worth it. Most of you, I think, will be fine with the. Uh, the 330, which you'll see this, the lease payment that they have on that. I did a video on that, so definitely check that out. And uh, so I think you'll be fine. Most of you will probably be fine with the 330. It's got plenty of torque down low. Instead of zero to 16, 3.8 seconds, it's 5.4 seconds. All right, so let's take some twisties and we'll uh, check on the suspension here. If you don't mind, I'm gonna leave it in Sport Plus mode. So we like the handling, we like the power. Never drove a three series that has 382 horsepower and it is a blast, let me tell you. But you know, it's not an M car. I don't like, I love this car as a daily driver, but I don't go, wow, it's Sunday morning, I wanna take this up my favorite mountain road. You're not, you're not gonna say that. So a couple of you have emailed me what's better, this or the F80 M3, and I would take the F80 M3 if you can get away with using it as a daily driver. Let's test the downshifts here. All right, so it actually is pretty smooth. On most of these torque converter automatics, it was not pretty smooth. This is actually pretty smooth, I'm impressed. Let's see, we'll downshift us into first. Yes, we're gonna go. We can go right on red here in Jersey. All right, so now we'll test it on some sharp turns here. Yeah, see, I can't even feel it on that kind of turns compared to summer tires. I can feel the all-season tires. Now, when you go in Sport or Sport Plus, you get the pops and bangs from the exhaust that we all love so much. Am I happy with this car? Would I lease this car again? Yeah, 100%. Since I need all-wheel drive, and uh, you know what, on my daily driver, I don't want to deal with changing from snow tires to winter tires. I'm too busy doing real estate to uh, you know, change it. And then here in the, you know, in the Northeast, in Northern New Jersey, in the spring and the fall, we have, you know, one day it's 35 degrees, then the next day it's 70 degrees, then it's 32 and snows, and then it's 60 degrees. So you can never like time it just right. There's always a week or two when your tires are wrong, whether you put on the summer too early or too late, dear, or, uh, your winter tire is too late, too wrong. That always happens because there'll be a couple weeks. You know, March is unpredictable, April's unpredictable, uh, November and December are unpredictable. So you're always going to get it wrong. So I'm looking forward to not having to change wheels and tires this year and changing the money. If you need uh, winter tires and wheels for an S8, also fits an A8, let me know. Hit me up because 
I'm definitely going to sell those. I don't need those anymore. Uh, this comes standard with 19 inch wheels. They are good looking wheels. Or I'm sorry, I think the 19 inch wheels, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Uh, they may be actually optional. I have the 19s and I think they look really, really good. But this is a fun car. I think it looks gorgeous in Portimao blue. I think it looks gorgeous in any color you want. Yeah, so there, whoa, that turbo really blew us out of that corner there. Wow, I think that's the fastest I've ever come out of that corner. But uh, yeah, the transmission is pretty good. I mean, it's not really designed like to go up and down with the paddles. That's not like the number one purpose of that transmission. So driving it without doing the paddles uh, does a really good job. In comfort mode, it's a regular BMW. So if you really want to have fun with this car, uh, which has always been my complaint, it's not hair on fire all the time, like my BMW 1 Series M is or my E46 M3, you know, obviously you have to put this in other modes to get it kind of like hair on fire. Otherwise, it's just uh, a regular BMW, but a fast, powerful, good looking BMW. I think the back seats are, are, are really roomy. Uh, I won't repeat everything I said in the other reviews. So uh, if I'm missing some stuff in this review, go on, go and check out the other reviews. But wow, this is a fast car. Now this is getting fun. You always know, bored the last three months because I was only driving, uh, not even three months yet. I was driving uh, you know, a couple hundred miles a month because I was pretty much stuck at home. And if I wanted to go for a fun drive, I'm taking one of the other cars. You know, I'm not, this is uh, unfortunately probably just on the list before the Jeep Grand Cherokee is. But let me tell you something, this is a blast to drive. And for the money, you know, if you want to lease for the money, I don't think there's a, you know, a better car to lease in that category. If you think there is one, let me know. But I think you can make a good curse, a case, <laughs> curse. I can make a good case for the 330 if you don't, uh, you know, need all this power. And it's just going to be a daily driver sitting in traffic car. You know, I, I mainly do showings, you know, not during rush hour. I look at buildings usually during the day or before the day starts early in the morning or in the evening or something like that. So I'm not really sitting in traffic with it. So to me, it was worth the extra power. Uh, this is, you know, this year in 60, 3.8 seconds is probably the fastest car I have. car that could do any, anything. Take your family. If you have clients in the back, and I don't know if anytime soon we're going to have clients in the back, uh, that the maintenance is included, that's fast, that should be reliable, certainly is a new car. And I even think this will be a sought after used car. I mean, nobody, this will never be a collectible car for sure. But five years from now or three years from now when these are off lease, I think a lot of enthusiasts will be looking at the M340 iX drive if they, you know, really wanted an M3, but they need an all-wheel drive or they need something a little more comfortable for work or uh, along those lines. So I think it is an excellent daily driver. It's not a sports car and it's certainly no M3, but this car is so good. The new M3 and M4 is going to be epic. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to do a lot more accelerations in the upcoming videos. So make sure to like, share, and subscribe for that. And uh, leave a comment below with your thoughts on the M340. Is it worth that lease of 600 a month? Are you better off with the 330 at 400 something a month? Or should you get something entirely different? Or you just rather have an F80 M3 with snow tires on it and summer tires? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, guys. And uh, I will see you next time.